Wow, I just went to Smart Christian live stream, live stream, and they're talking about suicide, whether people go to heaven if they committed suicide. If a Christian goes to heaven, they committed suicide. And, and, I, and I said, that's because people want to know because their loved ones died. You know, of course they want to know. So then I said, as it continued, I simply said, fear is the active ingredient in Christianity. And politics, I added. And then right away, the comments, oh, how about that uh, uh, Jesus wizard spatula? You came here to heckle, and you got the gospel. I said, been there big time, 40 plus years. I was an eighth-day independent fundamental Baptist evangelism explosion Christian. So, I gave them the gospel. I could have gave them more. The gospel, the good news is, there's no eternal hell in the Bible. It was made up later in the New Testament. And there's very little about it. So that's why I say Fear is the active ingredient, as it is in many religions. So, you got the gospel. The gospel is, hell is what you make and what we make collecti collectively here. And if there is another time afterwards, a heaven, it's not explained in any real way in the Bible or anywhere else. We imagine it in our heads what we might want it to be, if it be a peaceable place. Some people think they're going to fish for eternity, hunt for eternity, eat steak in heaven. Give me a break on leaven. Go on and on. So I didn't come to heckle. I came to insert the gospel. Because you're twisting it around with... With even Paul, what would uh, Judas was Judas in heaven? Somebody asked, "Would Judas go?" And one one person said, "Oh, I think it was the channel itself, Swan Christian Channel." Said, "No, Judas was not a believer." Of course, he would label him not a believer because he wouldn't have did what he did. But wasn't he used in God's plan to do that? He couldn't help it. You can argue over that too. But it doesn't matter. You always have to have these characters in there that need to, to, to go through the process of doing God's will. And even even the, the king uh, in Egypt that wanted the, the Pharaoh, wanted to leave Moses' people, God's people go. And it says, but God hardens his heart. When he was ready to let the people go, God hardened his heart to show his glory. <laughs> I'm so powerful. I hardened the He can't even he can't even let my people go. Now he wants to I'm gonna make him not let my people go so I can abuse him some more. That's the Bible, God. Because it's the active ingredient. Is fear is what needs to be in these stories to get you to fall down and worship because of what might happen to you. But see, it's a mixture of good in the New Testament. So it makes you feel like, if you're a decent person, you see the good things that, that appear good to what Jesus says, the things that you wish more people might want to be, or you might want to be. And then you swallow the whole, all the stories. It must be, well, it must be part of God's plan. How do you know it simply wasn't written by man? Controlling men throughout his stories. His story. And his story and his story and this king's story. The winners write history at that time. And isn't it amazing how you have witchcraft? Is, oh, you're not allowed to have witchcraft or sorcery. But yet, they call them seers. If you're on God's side, they call them seers and prophets. It's all the same. They're, they're conjuring up something from 
God told them, but the, the devils told the, the enemies. It's all witchcraft. It's all witchcraft because witchcraft is manipulation. Making people move by telling them it's not going to rain if they don't do it. Remember what happened last time? Is he bluffing us? These were biggest mental games. They didn't have technology like like we have that travels all this fake news so fast. When they had to put something out there, a false prophecy, they had to think it big. They weren't stupid just because they didn't have uh, phones and technology that we have today. That's another whole topic if you want to get into that. Obviously, they didn't at Moses' times have what we have. Whether, whether Moses actually existed or not. Oh! But the point is, the people that lived at that time, you read the Bible, you wonder how it was written, why it was written. Did, did God whisper in somebody's ear? Or did kings write this stuff? The winners write history. Kings write history. Presidents write history. Political leaders write their history. To the people that they rule. And you're studying the books of people that ruled other people. You can learn from it. But when you think it's directly for you, you can learn from it. But it doesn't mean that it's directly for you. And it's amazing how all these people today, this is the great tribulation. Yeah, we have the strangest technology that we've ever known of. And we see that it could collapse because of all the idiocy involved. But back in the times before technology, they had their problems and they thought it was the last days too. They couldn't help but think that. So, we just got to keep doing the best we can. Uh-oh. 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 Big boy. Get off of there, man. So that's what we do. We uh, just do the best we can do. Uh, if you read the Bible in whatever way you do, uh, may you uh, get something out of it. If it helps you in your life, the basic wisdom in there, but if it's ignited by the fear factor, it's like the beginning of wisdom. The fear, fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Do you know that applies to all lords? All lords. If, if you know someone's above you, there's a, a fear. You can call it a healthy fear. You're going to have a certain wisdom around the one you know that can do this, that, and the other thing to you, kick you out of your place. That's what that verse means. You can use it any way you want. If you put your hand under hot water, you're going to get burned. Basic fear analogy. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. It's a quote. It makes sense. But when one particular religion, or claim to be one particular religion, even though they're all divided in Judaism and Christianity, you take one verse like that and you, you take it for yourself like it's this great manifestation from God. It's basic universal truth. Fear of your lords is the beginning of all wisdom. So now you know where to start from. You know how much power your lords have, how many troops they have, what they can do to you. And it comes to the point in this society, people are sick of the lords. The lords are all nuts and greedy. One-eyed farmers. So it's all about, the, once again, it's all about the one-eyed farmer lords. Uh, my lady doesn't like when I bring up the one-eyed farmers, but it seems to all come down to one-eyed one-eyed farmers